Hey, Cyrus. How you doing, man? Not bad. Excellent. So today, let's talk a little bit about um, how to create a story and just the process of actually writing one. Sure. Excellent. So you've written a few stories in your life. We mm. have Captain China. Yes. We have um, Simpleton High. Yes. Done about 11 of those. Yes. And then on top of that, you've done more short stories, right? Yes. So you have Scarlet Scar. And mm -hmm. then we also have something on the way, um, Oni Riser. Right? Yes. So you've uh, done a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. In general, I assume that they're all different, but I assume that there are some general things that you can do between all of the different um, things that you've written, right? There's general mm -hmm. principles that you try sure. to maintain. Yes. Can you tell me a little about it? Well, I would say early on when I first started out writing, um, it was much more free-forming. Yeah. It's kind of like I have an idea, I kind of want to go somewhere with it, and I would just start drawing the comic book, kind of laying it out, and then figure out the story as I go along, and that right. kind of pacing. But later on, um, when I got, you know, started working professionally, you know, I spoke to some people, and they would say, you want to have a go on, on when you approach a story. So that's when I changed into writing a script first and then doing the artwork. So things are not as much free form anymore. There's, and usually the, there is a very concrete idea you want to present from beginning to end and where you want to start and where you want to end. Mm -hmm. um, I think the difficulty sometimes is when you write in that aspect, um, there's a little bit more to juggle. You know, as opposed to free-forming, you're just kind of like, here's an idea, I go from here, the character does this, and this happens, and all that. And you don't really think that much ahead. Sure. But when you're planning a story, you start thinking about what is the theme of the story. Mm -hmm. What is some of the values I want to present. All right. Uh, is there a moral at the end? Is there a lesson people can learn from this? You know, if, if it's a comedy, maybe not so much because you, your goal is to make people laugh. Sure. But if you try to write something that has a little, a little bit more of a theme that wants to explore some ideas and maybe present, you know, a problem and solution that you want to elevate it with maybe a moral, something yeah, like that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with some of your longer comics that you've tried to write and draw, yes. do you feel like it's sometimes difficult to maintain the general theme throughout or a general tone, or is it relatively easy when you're planning? I think it'd be, it'd be much easier to get lost if you don't have a, a planning down. Sure. Because um, you mentioned some of the high, that was it's interesting about some of the high was that there were tackle more as individual stories, so they're kind of like short little, little short stories within the series. Yeah, you have the same characters throughout. You have um, you know some of this uh, the same backdrop because they're in high school. Sure, you know they're the students and teachers, all that. Those are the same, but then the situation they encounter is very different. Mm -hmm. But and then within each story, you try to say, okay, is this going to be a parody? Of a pop culture, you know, movie references, or am I trying to explore um, a more concrete idea? Yeah, that makes sense. A concrete theme in this one. So, so some of the high was kind of like a good training ground because you can play around with different little little ideas very quickly. If it mm -hmm. works, it doesn't work. You you can try, you know, maybe just doing one page to tell a joke, set up a joke, do the punchline, and then even do gags and stuff like that. Sure. So, so you could say yes, I cut my teeth by just playing around with ideas like that. And then as opposed to Captain China, which is was planned from beginning to end. There was a, a, a full proposal written. There was a very clear idea of, okay, well, this is what's going to take place in issue 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 12. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and then you keep track of kind of where you want to go as an overall dominating thing and a concept. But then uh, within each issue, it was kind of like, I'm just... I have an idea what's going to happen with issue. There's always an outline that, that was pre-written. But what's going to happen within each of the detail, you kind of fill it in as you, you go along in right. terms of writing the actual issue. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, what issues do you generally run into when you're actually in the middle of drawing it that you didn't really encounter when you were trying to write it initially? I think one of the problems that happens quite often is that you could even you could either freeform or you could even um, you know, plan it out. And the problem I usually find is that sometimes things work better in your head or on paper mm -hmm. than when you actually execute it. There's sometimes you go, ooh, uh, uh, the, the, the idea f felt like it filled a, a pacing or a time frame better. But once you do it, you go, ooh, I feel like I'm missing one or two pages here. That needs to bridge the, the, the length of the story a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens. Or even bridge action. That kind of go, oh, okay, I thought I, I had maybe have a guy idea where one guy grabs another person that throws him. And you write it down on paper, and you present it in the comic book, then you go, that action fell a little too short. I need a little bit more. Mm -hmm. you know, most of the time I run, that's the problem I run into, is that the idea moves much quicker on paper. But once you actually put it into the, the actual comic book framing, the pacing needs to slow down a little bit. Sometimes for, for the, either for the, the readers to grasp what's happening, 
or to give him something a little bit more instead of like, well, that was just one punch and then the villain went down. Right. Maybe we need to have a few more back and forth of punching and kicking or jumping to fill that action out a little bit more. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, in general, when you're thinking about putting together pro the proposal for a different story, do you usually have an idea about where you want it to go first? Or do you have an idea of a concept of like the character first and you just want to tell that person's story? Um, I think that that's two very different approach. You know, something like Captain China was the idea, the overall concept came about first. You have a, you have an idea called Captain China. But how are you free? How are you going to go from there and form it into something that's a little bit more concrete? And mm -hmm. that took a little bit of time. How do I want to approach it? You know, um, is it going to be a, a sort of a fantasy type of China that we, that we know, kind of like a martial arts film? Sure. They're, they're mostly fantasy China. They never existed before. They don't exist, you know, ever. All right. Or do you want to set into a more believable backdrop, mm -hmm. which is what is what is the current climate? You know, why? What what is the social condition and even the the political situation? So, but Captain China decided to go for the more realistic route. Makes sense. Yeah, so that's how that was approached. Um, and as opposed to something like um, um, The Scarlet Scar, which is more of a character-driven idea. Right. You have a story, say, okay, it's going to be about a knight that goes around, you know, avenging um, his loss. So you have a character first. Sure. And then you figure out what are the scenario that's happening around them. Mm-hmm. You know. So what are some of the practical concerns that you have to take into consideration when you're trying to write your initial story, putting together your initial story? I always tell people that if you've never really written one, whether it's it's going to be a novel or comic book or, or anything, um, you should try to write a, a short story first. Sure. Yes, that, that's something that can be self-contained from beginning, middle, and end. you got everything in there. Try to put a little bit of thing, try to put a little bit of moral in there. If you can get all that in there, your story's not really going to go off the rail. It's going to be very precise. Right. Um, but if you can't contain a story, you know, a short story, and, and make it work, you're going to have much, much harder uh, issues when it comes to writing something bigger and longer. Because right. then you have multiple plot lines happening and multiple character development, and you may not be able to bring it back to where you want it. You, you derail, you lose control. It happens quite often. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I spend a lot of time, you know, looking at other people's comments, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy reading through them. Sure. Sometimes I find that you know there can be a lot of interesting art, mm -hmm. a lot of interesting characters, or circumstances, or situations. Yes. Sometimes it does just get a little bit um, difficult to sort of understand what they're going for. Yes. Sometimes, and you know, that happens to the best of us. Mm -hmm. And I think definitely yeah. having a good plan in place could be important. Mm -hmm. You know, since we've been working together, I've been working on my own comic. Okay. Just trying to. Uh, figure out the story, and I've probably gone through what, five or six iterations at this point. That happens. We've, We've talked quite a lot about oh, it. Oh, yes. And, you know, one of the things I constantly run into mm -hmm. is, oh, I love where I'm going, I have a great concept, or I have a certain part of the story that mm -hmm. I really, really want to tell. Sure. But then it's about putting the scaffolding together to sure. make sure that it makes sense, mm -hmm. number one. Yes. Or number two, uh, I'll run into a situation where... I'm trying so hard to get to that cir that situation that I have planned mm -hmm. that I forgot to make the character interesting, or I ran into a situation where you know it's a little bit boring yes. um, transitioning through it all, or it doesn't exactly um, hit the way I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. Once it's all said and done, it's sort of different, and so that entire process you know requires a lot of work on my oh, part, yes. oh, especially yes. since I'm not as you know apt to it as you are. I don't have as much practice, but you mm -hmm. know, I, I think it's definitely something that takes a bit of perseverance. But in the end, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yes. I think the, the one word that you brought up, which is very good, is practice. A lot of people think I can just sit down and start writing. Mm -hmm. It works for some people who are probably you know, just very talented, born with a natural talent to write. Sure. But the truth is, for most people who write, um, it's a process. It's kind of like learning how to draw. You, know, you, you may want to take some classes, some basic writing courses to f get an idea. Uh, look how other, look at how other you know people write. Maybe even copy some of the style you're writing, right. you know, and then learn the ropes of that, and then from there just write and write and write. You know, nobody, it's like nobody ever becomes a great writer overnight. Nobody mm -hmm. ever becomes a great artist overnight. Right. Um, you got to practice. You, know, you got to practice, practice, practice. Um, and most of the time, if you've never done any writing before, your first work is probably not that good. Makes sense. It probably is not because it's much more simplistic. Uh, you're kind of writing something because you're imitating something you saw. Right. Like, oh, I like the Game of Thrones, so I want to write something with dragons. Well, I'm not going to be trying yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's yeah. too difficult. But. but something like that, where you like, I want to write dragons and mm -hmm. magic and a kingdom, all that kind of stuff, it becomes very big. Right. It becomes very daunting when you start exploring that. Um, like, 
you know, I would say Scarlet Scar is a good example. You know, we could we could explore that entire world. What would the world be like if it's there's it's overrun with vampires? Right. It's in the Middle Ages. Um, you know, you have a, a not just a swordsman that is hunting vampires for his own personal revenge, but what are, what is it like out there? You know, normal people. Maybe there are other uh, people, you know, other lives being affected by something like that. Sure. Uh, and the thing, but the thing is, I decided let's just do one character, one scenario, explore that. If it's good, we can do more. If it's not, you know, people don't respond to it as well. At least we tried it. You know, we tried something mm. different. Here's a great example of mm -hmm. this that you've also done, um, Chronicles of Luther. I think that's a pretty interesting yes. comic. Uh, one of the things that you were telling me about beforehand was all of the prep work that yes. was required to even begin to write. Mm -hmm. You had to do a lot of research and you just really try to best understand sort of who the character is and the yes. kind of time period that he lives in. Mm -hmm. When you're not creating a world but trying to actually um, imitate one that actually exists, yes. I'd say that there's a lot more upfront work involved. Oh, yeah. Well, Luther, I always describe as the hardest writing I've ever done, mm -hmm. mainly because we had a very specific target audience in mind. Um, we wanted to, you know, we want to, of course, uh, reach, you know, Christians and, and, and non-believers at right. the same time. So you're, you're writing for two completely different, almost opposing group of audience. Second of all, it's a real person that existed. So you have to be very careful. You can't make up stuff as you go along. It's not like a superhero book. You know, how did Batman get out of a situation? He can pull something out of his, out of his utility belt. Right. Luther or some of those scenarios are real. You know, you can't just, like, make up stuff. So that being another challenge. Third, well, we're definitely trying to put dominant Christian themes into the book. Sure. Very, very concrete themes and ideas. Exploring friendships, fellowship, you know, uh, you know, repentance, all that kind of stuff. All that makes sense. So you have to try to present it in an almost 20-somewhat 20, 20 page comic book. All right. Very, very difficult. Um, and there was a lot of research done, you know, there was, I went online, you know, read a lot of the different, um, websites that, that, you know, Wikipedia included, but all the websites that people wrote about him, and then even bought books really thick, almost like dictionary, like books that talked about Luther's life. And I read through that. And then there was, um, even movies. There were several, you know, movies that were made about, you know, Martin Luther. And, um, I watched all of those just to see how have people interpreted them. So can we do something that's a little different in the process? So with something like that, it's, it is it is a lot, a lot of work involved. You can't just fake it and pretend you know something. You really have to know the subject matter to interpret it properly. True. Sure. And then uh, at the end, I was pretty satisfied because I thought we pre presented something that is um, um, factual-based, has a lot of facts in there, has a lot of uh, clear, understandable Christian message. But also there was stuff that we dramatized that we didn't know when we had to kind of fill in the gap but I felt like what we filled in the gap makes sense to what was going on based on real information that we were able to find. Right. Mm -hmm. So you took your best guess when you had yeah. to, but where you could actually put down facts, you tried to do sure. the best you could. Well, at the end, we're telling a story. Right. So and, and, and when you tell a story, somewhere in there, you can kind of kind of get around to it by dramatizing a few things. Because you, because if you don't dramatize things, some of the idea becomes very flat. Right. You can't really have a, a dramatic escalation of, okay, that's what it's about, why his life is hitting that point where he needs to make a change or why it doesn't and things drop. And that's why it's important to 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 sometimes dramatize because sometimes your ideas become much more um, becomes much more pointed can get across to the readers. All right, absolutely. So all of that together really culminated in that kind of story. Yes. Even though it was a it's not a one off, you still have a few more coming. Yes. Um, each story I would say is a little self-contained. It has a self beginning, middle, yeah. and end, mm -hmm. and it yeah. can be read on the route. So that's an important thing to consider. Yes, and that makes sense why it would be some of your hardest writing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in general, any kind of writer needs to be dedicated to whatever they're trying to do. You know, yes. put honest, genuine effort into it. I think that's a mm -hmm. big part of it. Yeah, and then the other part of it also is to be willing to you know take criticism, be able sure. to hear other people's opinions, of course, it, and then try to make adjustments where necessary mm -hmm. because you know sometimes um things are great when it's in your head or even when you write yes. it down but then someone's genuine opinion is important i was watching this great youtube video mm -hmm. um i think the channel is called screen courage okay film courage it's something like that all right and they were saying that you wanted to try to write six optimized scripts a year mm -hmm. and so that's trying to put your best effort with your best ideas your sure. best concepts everything that you can and you want to make six of those a year and they say if you're doing that on top of whatever other work you're yeah. doing, 
you're going to always have work to do. Of course. Because, you know, sometimes things just disappear into the ether. Oh, yeah. People don't necessarily like it for any number of reasons. Mm-hmm. But if you're constantly working on your craft and showing new things, oh, yeah. eventually something's going to have to hit. Sure. And I think that's the same thing with what we're doing here with our work. Continually trying to put new things out, not letting, you know, popularity or whatever keep mm-hmm. us down, but constantly trying to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward and making sure that we're always hot on the pulse of whatever sure. we're going yeah. on. I mean, you know, it's not besides the stuff you just mentioned that you can people can actually visibly see on our website, I will have like I think dozens and dozens of, of unused scripts that are just sitting on a computer. Right. Yeah, because there was a period of time I, I, you know, that I just wasn't drawing anything. I was just writing consistently, you know, and I did that for probably like five, six years. Just I have an idea, start writing, start writing, and start writing it, and, and it, it sharpens you in that process, you know. And I, and I really like the fact that you talk about these things where people want to take criticism too. Because every time I write something, I would send it off to a friend of mine, you know, one or two friends of mine, say, well, "What do you think?" and get their feedback. Uh, and sometimes they go, oh, I don't like this or that. They go, okay, well, maybe I, maybe I didn't think about that area. Let me go back and, and retweak it and make it better. Sure. Yeah. And then, too, one thing that I found with my own writing process, mm-hmm. even though it's a little bit more limited, is that even when I feel like an idea failed, yeah. I can at least identify why it wasn't necessarily good. Sure. Take the things that I still like from that mm-hmm. and adapt it and try to bring it into um, something that's slightly different, which sure. is what I really want to use, and then get rid of the rest. Yep. You know, you're letting the um, fat just sort of just go away, and mm-hmm. you're just trying to keep the meat. And so, oh yeah, that's really what you want to do. It, writing is a process, like anything. You know, you you trim out what's not good, keep what's good, work on that, fix that. But maybe at the end you realize, oh, that don't work either. I mean, throw that out the window completely. Sure. Try something new from scratch. Absolutely. Uh, and and I think writing is is even easier than drawing. Sure. You know, because you're you, you can you know use a pencil on a note paper, you know, write it on paper. You know, if that's what works for you, or you can type it on a computer. Sure. You know, um, and and treat it as something that you enjoy. Yeah. I, I think one of the biggest problems I I've met people who may not like to write, but they force themselves to write, and usually it's a disaster. Oh really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, George Lucas always said he doesn't like to write. Oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is true. George Lucas has always said that. And you look at his movies, you kind of go, okay, I can see why you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, sh- so if you want to write a story, you want to find the joy in that. It's like, I really, I really like writing a character. I really like writing a scenario. Yeah. I want to do conflict. I want to, you know, put funny dialogues, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, there's, there has to be research done in, into what you're writing. Always look into it. I mean, I have to give George... Lucas credit because he he said when he first started writing Star Wars, he went and traced back to uh, what was like the very first you know human encounter alien type of science fiction story. So he made that effort to see where it started. So he figured out okay, this is the origin point of first time we have a, a guy in space maybe meeting aliens or fighting aliens, and how did that ever become what it is? Now? What is that that he saw as a kid? Which is you know um, movie serials stuff like Buck Rogers and stuff like that. And he says, I can take that and then move one step forward. So he even did research in that respect. Mm-hmm. Doesn't like to write, but at least he did that. And that's why I think his early Star Wars were, were very solid. Yeah. Because he at least understood the subject matter he was working with. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And even the uh, the prequels, even though I don't think they were fantastic, mm-hmm. I think there was definitely a lot of really good and solid ideas in Yes. There. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would say by summing everything up at the end is that if anybody can write, everyone can you know, find your own voice in what you want to interpret. Sure. Doesn't have to be a comic book. Doesn't have to be a novel. It's just whatever makes you makes you say, okay, this is what's in my head. Let me get it on paper. Let me get it out there to people. But don't be afraid to show your work to people because otherwise, you know, there's no point in writing. If you, you're just going to write it down on paper and then bury it in your closet, right? nobody ever knows. Sure. Makes a lot of sense yeah. to me. Well, I think that's good for now. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks, guys, for watching. Yep. See you guys next time. Bye.